but I now know that you super fans are going to be asking yourself one final question. When is Ant going to be taking a look at the GBA and DS games? There's like 20 titles left to look at. Oh, son of a... Many months later. I wasn't ready. Few things in life go together as well as SpongeBob SquarePants and the Game Boy Advance. Nintendo did make that SpongeBob themed GBA SP, let's remember here. They definitely knew who lived in a pineapple under the sea. And I guess with that knowledge, you may as well slap his face on a console and call it a day. The Sponge also started his video game career on the Game Boy Color. We covered that magnificent beauty last time. Which means someone saw this and thought to themselves, oh yeah. We need sequels! But really now, Spongebob having a legacy on the GBA should be pretty obvious. In the early 2000s, Spongebob was all the rage, so was the GBA, and licensed video games were all over the place. Learning there are a whopping seven Spongebob games on the console should come as a shock to nobody. Except for me, who now has to play all of them. Hell, he was even a big player in the short-lived Game Boy Advance video line, starring in three great cartridges, permanently preserving 12 classic episodes onto the GBA library. You'll love to see it. I mean, not physically love to see it, because boy, this compression is rough, but hey, it's still funny to think about. Some of the games we're discussing today even showed up in a bunch of combo packs. They really squeezed this sponge for as much worth as they possibly could. So, continuing my legacy of covering every single Spongebob game, I guess. Today, we're gonna tackle all of the games on the Game Boy Advance. Oh boy. And just to be clear here, we're still not gonna be talking about the overall Nicktoons games. Even though Spongebob is the main face on a lot of them, those titles will have their own time to shine in the future, don't you worry. We got seven games to talk about now as it is. Let me breathe. And yes, to all of you super fans out there, this does mean that the DS is next and I got all of them ready to go. I can't believe this is what I've become. Starting things off, it's important to note the common thread that ties all of these seven games together. If it wasn't already painfully obvious, yes, every single one of them are portable, quote unquote, inferior versions of existing console games that were released right alongside said console games. You remember that era where advertisements would hype up the latest and greatest game releasing on every single console under the sun and barely ever showed what the portable versions were ever about? What a, what a gross time that was, I'm glad that's over. Oh wait. The first game to grace the 32-bit handheld is SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge, the only title to also be released on the PlayStation 1 alongside the GBA, rather than the PS2. Pretty cool, right? No? Just me, I find that interesting? Okay. Like all of the other console versions of today's games, I did cover this title before, and long story short, I was not a fan. Super Sponge is a pretty mediocre 2D platformer with a really weird art style and level designs that are all over the place. The mechanics were all so super poorly done. <laughs> Yep, I still hate this. But maybe the GBA version is different. I mean, both versions only released three days apart, so... I'm assuming those extra three days were for polish. Structurally, the game is basically the same. This is the only instance in this entire video where both versions are more or less really identical, so keep that in mind. We got simple point A to point B platforming, basic combat, some mechanics like needing to stay moist while climbing Sandy's never-ending tree is still here, and it's still not that fun, but it's here. But, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this, the game is actually better. Okay, yeah, now I know I'm losing it. The GBA version cuts out a lot of the fluff. Any story that was there is reduced dramatically, stages are a lot shorter, meaning you get to progress at a much faster pace, mechanics like the coral blower are simplified and thus a lot better to use, there's none of that huge random maze garbage like the PS1 version. Don't get me wrong, still not a great platformer, but for being a first year GBA game, it's actually fairly decent. I don't know what they were thinking with this soundtrack though, oh my god. Yeah, you know, that classic Spongebob jingle, my favorite thing. And it's also a really short ride. You start the game, 45 minutes later, you take out whatever this weird abomination is, and you're able to celebrate Patrick's birthday in peace. Oh dear God, Plankton, what's wrong with you? Oh no, he's hot! Next up, we got Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Great. Well, considering how dreadful the console game was, this one might be a bit better as well. 
It's a pretty low bar, but hey, it's something to strive for. So despite sharing the same name, the plot is actually slightly different. Rather than Gary randomly bringing the genie bottle filled treasure chest into SpongeBob's house, they now find said treasure chest in a cave instead. Whoa, man, this totally changes the lore. You gotta calm down. The objective is a bit different as well, to be fair. You gotta run across Bikini Bottom to find 10 hidden treasures, and once you do that, the Dutchman has agreed to grant SpongeBob a wish. We are really committing to the whole him being a genie thing, despite him not being a genie. But, okay, it's another side-scrolling platformer. You gotta remember here, since we are on the GBA, basically all the games here are gonna be side-scrolling platformers. It is just best to accept that now. And also, is it just me, but does the coin sound effect sound really similar to the star bits from Mario Galaxy? I really hate that I made this comparison. The main goal with this game is exploration. The stages have three different keys to find, bring them all to the chest, and you win. And the primary way of getting things done now is by blowing bubbles, a totally different moveset to the console version. I will give the game credit. You see, on your travels, you stumble upon different liquids that give attributes to said bubbles, like floating, being more powerful, and the ability to bounce off them. It's just that, Oh my god, there is so much backtracking in this. I gave Super Sponge a little bit of credit for dropping the huge maze-like level design, but it turns out I didn't have to look far to find it. It's not even that you just have to keep running back and forth, but you gotta make sure you have the right bubble liquid at the time as well. And oh man, it sucks a whole lot. All of these different holes on him? You mean to tell me he can't just pop the different bubble bottles in there and then we're good to go? That's the inventory system. It writes itself. And then there's also these special stages that... Oh god, is it better than the console version? No, I would say it's just as bad, but for different reasons. What a badge of honor. There is no saving the Revenge of the Flying Dutchman name. Ooh, but okay, we got Battle for Bikini Bottom next, based on an actual good game this time around. Okay, I'm excited. And it uses the same exact engine as Flying Dutchman. Huh, okay, but I mean now the stages are linear, so inherently that does make this a bit better, but once again, you can only complete a level after you collect the three shiny things within it. Why? It's not even like every level is safe, by the way. You still got back and forth to deal with occasionally, and it sucks every time. This city level is terrible. The bonus stages are a bit better. They are this time of the auto-scrolling variety, and I did always enjoy these kinds of challenges, but otherwise... There really isn't much to this one. It's just marginally better than Flying Dutchman, which is a real shame because man, Battle for Bikini Bottom is so good, they didn't even try with this one. And I can't believe Super Sponge is still in the lead. Though in a surprising turn of events exclusive to the GBA version, Battle for Bikini Bottom does let you ride atop of Mystery the Seahorse. That's pretty cool, let's be honest here. If you agree, let me see a wee snaw in the chat. Wee snaw. But the Spongebob movie game, I'll be damned, it actually changes things up. For one, we finally have a decent art style now that works with the limitations of the system. That pseudo 3D stuff was ambitious, I guess. But I really dig the solid outline sprite work utilized this time around. This looks pretty good. And brace yourself, all you gotta do in this game is get to the end of the stage, and it ends. I know, I can't believe it either. The game moves at a slower pace than the previous adventures, though there is a dash move you can pull off, which is actually kind of satisfying to use. And you also control both SpongeBob and Patrick at the same time, being able to utilize strengths from both characters to get through the challenges that are thrown your way. There are these weird running towards the screen challenges, which aren't all that great, but I am genuinely surprised here. The core game this is actually pretty decent. You travel across a bunch of locations that are faithful to the movie as well. I didn't think we would actually get a portable version of the movie here. I mean, it's not like Battle for Bikini Bottom shared the same levels between versions, but yeah. Just in case you were worried about the GBA not being powerful enough to handle David Hasselhoff's mile-long hairy body concluding with a boss battle on his butt, then rest easy, of course that's here. And one final thing, no thank you scary tongue grandma in a monster's mouth is one of the best lines ever said in a video game. So there is that too. I was so mystified as to why this game is actually kind of decent, I had to, I had to find out why, and it turns out, foolish me, I just wasn't paying attention when the opening credits were starting. Turn the game on, let a few seconds pass, and hey look at that, way forward. That's right, they got the developers behind WWF Betrayal on the Game Boy Color to work on a Spongebob game. That is growth. And the following title, Lights, Camera, Pants, same deal. Another way forward Spongebob game. Color me 
actually excited. Similar to the console game's plot, the film producer Gil Hammerstein is looking for actors for his Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy TV show. So take control of SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, and Squidward and tackle a bunch of challenges to prove your worth. Once again, we are working with the same graphical engine as the previous game, but the structure is pretty different. We do have very familiar, slower paced platforming to do once again, but now you go into every level with all four characters, each with slightly different moves, and if any character loses a life, you continue on like they were never alive. It's the Spongebob game with permadeath that we all wanted. But the level design and the themes are not even close to being as interesting as the last game. This is as bland of a licensed platformer as you can get, and it never picks up. And also Squidward? Why, why, why does he jump like that? You know, it's not every day you get to see Squidward jump, I don't know if I've ever seen him do it before, but this... Clearly we were not meant to see it happen. And it was painfully obvious that WayForward knew the platforming was dull because this time around, mini games also have a major focus, falling way more in line with the console version. You got rhythm games, stacking burgers, bouncing balls back at bullies to protect sandcastles, driving, oh my god, the driving. Oh, uh, yep, mm-hmm, okay. Yeah, just, just going out for a spin, you know me. All right, we're gonna we're gonna end this anytime soon. I'm I'm getting I'm getting sick. It is a shocking amount of variety for a game that only takes about an hour to finish, and there is some extra stuff that you can unlock. But quite frankly, none of this is worth it. The unfortunate fact of the matter is, when it comes to their older stuff, Way Forward was not always necessarily the name that guaranteed quality, and this game shows it. But with one game good and one game bad, maybe we need one final attempt to swing the average in their favor. Way Forward also made Creature from the Krusty crab for GBA as well. Or remember, as Reggie promoted, Breacher from the Krusty Carb. Still my favorite thing. Now if you remember, on console, this adventure was a literal fever dream that started with quality Spongebob nightmare fuel. I still hate this. And you'll be happy to know we get that on the Game Boy Advance as well. This is just as hard of a game to explain as its console counterpart. Essentially, you play as Spongebob, Patrick, and Plankton, going through bizarre dream sequences where things just sort of happen, and you, as the player, just have to accept it. Spongebob is driving, Patrick's a superhero, Plankton's being chased by a cheeseburger, don't ask any questions, shut up and platform. It will forever be one of the most incoherent things I've ever played through, but on a gameplay front, it's fine, I guess? Platforming, racing, flying, fighting, more flying, shooting, even more flying. Oh my god, there is so much flying. And to be honest, as nonsensical as it is, I did enjoy this one more than the console game. It is just as all over the place with its ideas, but the mechanics are kept a lot simpler due to being on the GBA. And unlike some of the console segments that went on for just far too long, all of this is crammed into another roughly hour-long adventure. It made things a whole lot more digestible, and because the minigames didn't feel out of place, like the GBA version of the last game, I'm gonna give the point to Breacher from the Krusty Carb GBA. I even managed to unlock some extra mini games on my playthrough as well. I wonder what's hidden inside these unlockable side menus here. <laughs> I still think ultimately the Spongebob movie game comes out on top for the way forward affairs, but this is, for sure, way more enjoyable than Lights, Camera, Pants. And that concludes, I guess, the way forward Spongebob trilogy. Pretty hilarious this even exists in the first place. But before we truly wrap this up for good, there is one final game, Atlantis Square Pantis. Basically, you combine the SpongeBob and Patrick controls of the movie game with the exploration-based platforming and sporadic minigame approach of Lights, Camera, Pants, and yeah, that more or less sums up this entire thing. Though this time, you also gain access to Mr. Krabs and Sandy as playable characters as well. And depending on the character's placement, you get to pull off some unique moves. Ooh, very Sonic Advance 3, I guess? Except you can only swap characters at specific spots, so it's also kind of like Donkey Kong 64? Oh god. Okay, I really, I, I really gotta quit with these comparisons. Maybe it's the pure burnout starting to settle in, but this is a pretty unremarkable platformer. You kinda just meander around, solve a few quote-unquote puzzles that stand in your way, pass the super easy minigames that pop up because you just gotta have minigames here, it's the law, and you rinse and repeat until you beat the game, or the game beats you, whatever happens first. I know it's not the most exciting way to end this retrospective, but I mean... I really like this Spongebob and Patrick trapped in a bubble sprite, though. But alright, I know you're all asking for it, it is time for a tier list. At the very top, we got the Spongebob movie, followed by Creature from the Krusty Krab, Super Sponge, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Lights, Camera, Pants, Atlantis, Square Pantis, and finally, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. No matter which version of the game we talk about, this game belongs in the garbage. 
If your tier list is different than mine, let me know yours in the comments below, because something about having conflicting tier lists among Spongebob GBA fans is, is infinitely hilarious to me. So that means these are next. Give me a few more months, and we'll talk about these two. Oh, tartar sauce.